TC Weatherland. Here's Rob's forecast. Welcome back. Well, our weather here locally in Acadiana is going to be nice and quiet, but awfully hot and getting hotter in the days ahead. A simple forecast locally, but a difficult forecast tropically speaking, no matter where you look in the Atlantic Basin. So let's get out there. First off, look at the clouds out there today. Beautiful cumulus clouds, and they will be fewer and farther between in the days ahead as drier air continues to work its way into Acadiana. That means the heat will certainly beyond. In fact, we'll get close to records. I don't think we're going to break records. Records are triple digits this time of year, but just about as hot as it gets for the first week or two of September. So let's take a look first off at Dorian. We got three radars going tracking Dorian this afternoon in the KTC weather lab. Here's the center of circulation, the eye and finally making a move. Here's a 12 hour loop finally getting away from Grand Bahama Island. Still seeing some tropical showers here, but the uh, winds are moving away. The winds are turning more westerly, and once they come southwesterly and southerly, uh, the storm surge will begin to come down across the Grand Bahama Island. And again, unfortunately, Mother Nature reclaiming Grand Bahama, the Abaco Islands, uh, with uh, pretty much total ocean inundation across both islands and widespread complete destruction. It'll take years for this area to get back if it ever comes back to the way it was just a few days ago. Now the tropical rain bands are starting to work their way onto the Florida coast from Fort Pierce through Melbourne, the Space Coast and Daytona Beach and this is where the gusty winds will be and this will be edging inland all the way up through the Carolinas down the line. You can see behind the system drier air or shooting down to the west coast of Florida so that's going to keep some of the tropical rain bands just near the immediate coast for us, it means hotter, drier weather, and we have another tropical storm that popped up, and that's going to be moving into Mexico, and that's just going to bring this ridge of high pressure southward and really dry us out and turn the heat on as well. As we turn the channels on the infrared satellite imagery, this is Fernan that is going to be moving into Mexico. We'll show you the track of this storm in just a bit. No effects on us. It's breezy offshore, southwest or deep water areas, but those winds coming down, and then we have Dorian obviously off to the East Dorian slowly moving northward. A shell of the storm it was just a few days ago, but when you get a mature hurricane like this, the wind field begins to expand out. So you're going to have wind issues, rain issues, and storm surge issues hugging the entire Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina coast, pretty much as a category two all the way up. Uh, perhaps the strongest effects of this storm will be felt from Jacksonville on northward through the Carolinas, then finally moving out to sea after Friday, so it's going to be a long week of more Dorian talk here. Again, the European model right here showing the highest winds hugging just offshore, but you're going to see gusts to 60, maybe to hurricane force and some of the rain bands that try to work their way in, especially across Georgia and portions of South Carolina, perhaps up through Myrtle Beach and even up through Wilmington. You could see gusts over hurricane force again. Uh, what we're showing you is the sustained winds here, uh, but the uh, specific plots of the gusts that are possible. And you can see Cape Hatteras also in the zone for the possibility of hurricane conditions down the line, then that system finally moves out. Now, as I mentioned, there's also going to be storm surge issues from this is eastern North Carolina down through the Wilmington area. And then as we get down into the South Carolina area, especially south and west of Myrtle Beach, all the way down through Charleston, you can see anywhere between a six up to a nine foot surge in spots. So there's going to be inundation of the low lying areas in the coastal marshes down through Beaufort, South Carolina, Tybee Island. As we get into Georgia, all the way down through uh, just near the Jacksonville area of Florida, again, up to a three to five foot surge along the most of the entire Florida coastline. So here's tropical storm Fernand. It will be moving inland by this time tomorrow. So uh, this is kind of a one and done system and a kind of a name that will be used and reused six years from now. By the way, Dorian, you can guarantee that name will be retired after the damage it's done in the Bahamas. Meanwhile, in between through the week, uh, we're just seeing hot and humid weather. You see Dorian heading up along the east coast and we don't see nary a breath of tropical moisture that will give us a chance of rain until about a week from today. So it's going to be hot through the weekend. 
and then maybe some tropical moisture coming in the Gulf. And oh yeah, by the way, there's other systems that we're watching uh, that we will probably be watching as we get well into the mid and latter part of September. Uh, the model showing a couple of systems between the GFS and the European model. In fact, and right now we're just tracking five systems. You got Fern 9, Dorian, uh, this system by Bermuda, about a 50% chance of development. TD number eight that's going to become Gabrielle. That's out in the open Atlantic. No worries with this. Uh, we'll watch the tropical waves coming off the African coast. One that has a 70% chance of developing over the next five days. So busy in the tropics and it's turned on. It is the peak of hurricane season and this is what we're seeing. Warm and humid overnight tonight. It's going to be a quiet night. Clear sky, 74 the low tomorrow. 96 the high. That heat index getting up to about 104 to 105. No rain in the forecast. Light northeast wind and we'll call it the endless summer because it's going to seem that way through the rest of the week. Look at the numbers here. 97 Thursday, 98 Friday, 99 on Saturday. If we hit 99 on one of those days ahead, I'll make it the, the hottest day of the summer. We've hit 98 a few times this summer in Lafayette, and this will be the most extended heat wave. We've had two three day heat waves. This one's going to last at least for five days, may push into early next week as well, but we're building in some climatology as we say as we mm -hmm. go into next week with maybe a slight chance of a few cooling showers in the afternoon. Welcome to September. Yeah, yes, exactly thanks right. Rob.